Hi, Adam Gower here at Gower Crowd, and in today's podcast, I am absolutely thrilled to introduce you to Davon Reeves, who is founder and CEO at Vesta. Dot com, which is a newly formed regulation crowdfunding crowdfunding portal. So a true crowdfunding website. Davon has a fascinating story and is very courageous because actually Reg CF, uh, which is the world that she's dealing in, is incredibly difficult to manage. It involves registration with the SEC and with FINRA and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Quite a high hurdle to overcome and she's done it and she is a very impressive lady and you're going to love to hear her story today and what is also important about today's podcast is that it is the last of season four of the Gower Crowd podcast starting next time will be season five we're going to be concentrating exclusively on the reality of real estate investing what's going on in the market, how turmoil is affecting commercial real estate, a very, very different approach. So be sure to go to gowercrowd.com if you would and find the podcast page for today's episode and be sure to subscribe to the series. What is coming up is going to blow your socks off. You are absolutely going to want to tune into every episode. It's going to guide you through what's going on. It's going to provide you with some extraordinary opportunities that you won't see anywhere else, right? That's all at gowercrowd.com. All right, so without further ado, I am so thrilled to introduce you to Davon Reeves, founder and CEO at Vesta. Davon, what a pleasure meeting you. It's been a while. We've been kind of back and forth with the schedule, but I'm absolutely thrilled to meet you. Thank you so much. You have started a regulation crowdfunding funding portal, not one of the easiest challenges to take on in the crowdfunding world. Before we start, and I ask you why crowdfunding, why Reg CF, and why now? <laughs> Let me ask you oh. about your background. Who are you? Where do you come from? What's your story? Okay, my story. So, hello, 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 everyone. My name is Davon Rees. I'm the CEO and founder of Vester, which is a crowdfunding platform. Uh, we are a crowdfunding platform for commercial real estate. Um, we're based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And the reason, and so my background, I'm actually from the hotel space. I actually got my start off working as a front desk agent at the Hyatt Regency Atlanta while I was in college. And I navigated my way from the front desk to hotel ownership. So throughout that time frame of raising capital, looking for investors or limited partners, it was a little challenging, right? There wasn't a lot of platforms out there for hotels or um, or you had to be an accredited investor. And at that time, when I first started on my journey, I wasn't an accredited investor. And so I found some crowdfunding platforms, but the experience wasn't the best. Um, and it, but really, it was just a limited opportunity. And so I was like, you know what? Can I just do this myself? And that's what I did. So I created an I created Vester. We launched uh, July 11th, uh, 2022, in honor of my late father. That was his birthday. And um, I created this platform because I realized that there were people who were, you know, first time developers or, you know, real estate owners, and they wanted to, they needed help uh, finding additional capital, right? Um, And also an opportunity for non-accredited investors to invest. So that's why I took it upon myself to start off with a regulation CF. So some, you know, because I was thinking about myself in mind, right? You know, as a first time developer or owner, um, who's looking to raise capital, but may not they may not have a large portfolio to deal with other platforms, you know, like my competitors. But and also that way, non-accredited investors can invest. So investors open for hotels, multifamily, daycare, senior living, pretty much anything that's commercial real estate. What is uh, so? Tell me, what is the, I know what it is, but for, for you know, for the one person in the audience who doesn't, what is Regulation CF? And what is a crowdfunding? portal, which is what you've set up. Oh, yes. So Regulation CF, um, essentially what it is, it is a type of um, type. Well, it's not a fund, but it's a type of raise um, uh, from the uh, SEC, which stands for Securities Exchange Commission. Um, and so how we are, reg- we're a member of FINRA, which stands for the Financial Industry uh, Regulatory Authority, and we're regulated by SEC. And so what that means is that we can raise up to $5 million 
And we can also accept both accredited and non-accredited investors. So for those who don't know what an accredited investor is, an accredited investor um, is someone who makes over 200000 a year or they have a, a net worth of a million dollars or more, excluding their primary residence. And so with the REC CF or crowdfunding port, we are, we're just a portal, we're just a platform. Um, so that means that uh, others can actually raise capital uh, for their deals on our particular um, on, on our particular site. So think of us as a marketing place for those who are looking to invest and think of us as an additional marketing tool for those who are looking to raise capital for their deals. Uh -oh. A little break there while I sneezed off mic. Sorry, about that. I don't want to blow your hair off or anything. Um, okay, so but when you got in, when you started looking at Reg, how did you discover Reg CF? Uh, because there are all kinds of options on there's Reg CF, there's Reg A you could have done, yeah. or Reg D five hundred six B. I mean, there's all kinds of ways that you could have uh, set about this. So why Reg CF? And what? Tell me about the journey because it's a tough one. You, you're courageous to go down that route you know no one ever asked me that is a great question so the reason why i chose reg so you ever never heard about it it was years mm -hmm. ago there was a um a reg a form um no actually i was looking to invest in a hotel but that's when i found out about the term of accredited investor and i couldn't invest because how her fund was structured and i was like there has to be a way i always i don't take no for an answer I'm like, there has to be a way that i can invest in this deal right and so then it was another company uh, that launched um, and they made it, they received a lot of media attention and they, um, they was a reg, reg A, um, reg A um, tier two. I think that's when it just launched, reg A tier two. And they were accepting both accredited and non-accredited investors. And I was going to launch that uh, with some other folks previously, but, you know, it, it didn't work out. And so, but as I was doing my research about Reg A and Tier 2, that's when I found out about Reg CF. Because uh, I was looking for something where accred non-accredited investors could invest. But at that time, when I was doing my research, the raise was like a million dollars. And so, you know, for trying to raise capital for hotels, that's not enough. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, can I create? So as I was going through the rabbit hole of researching, I found out I can actually do this myself. And years later... Um, I met a, a, a web developer uh, who helped me in a branding design agency. They're one, so shout out to Marianne. Uh, they helped develop the, the brand, came up with the name Vester, um, helped me do, we actually built our technology. So you want to talk about the journey? We built our technology, we didn't white label it. Um, so that process was definitely different because um, I don't even know how to code and now I own a technology company now. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, so um, definitely different. And also, I didn't come from a, I don't have a securities background, right? Um, I just have a hotel background, but I started to learn more about securities because I had to raise capital for my deals. And so throughout my journey, just, you know, um, applying through FINRA, uh, which is a process in itself. Uh, but I understand because as a portal, our job is to protect the investors, right? So we have to just make sure that, you know, we're regulated. We have to make sure we're not, you know, letting, you know, someone on our platform like, a you know, Bernie Madoff, um, you know, or Billy from the Fire Festival always use them as excuses. I mean, examples of what we will, you know, what we should not have on our platform. So we have to do our due diligence as a platform to make sure that um, we have the right deals. Uh, that makes sense that make sure that we don't have you know someone who you know could mislead and of course you know we uh, inform that investors have to do their own research and due diligence but as a platform you know the investors are looking at us and in in you know basically stating that seeing that brand trust um for uh brand trust to to raise more um to to, to invest don't be distracted by the sound of uh, my keyboard in case you can hear it. It's simply because I'm taking notes. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm putting questions down. All right. So what's the process been like? Tell me about the process of working with the SEC and FINRA, because that's a big deal. You are regulated. You're directly responsible to. They look over your shoulder. No, it's, it's a big deal. It's not like a regular reg d 506 b or c where you're kind of on your own so what was that process like so it is very different so as my lawyer calls me i am a a true entrepreneur and what he meant by that was that um you know entrepreneurs we 
we don't really have a lot of structure. We just come up with an idea and then just, woo, there we go. You know, it's just, and I'm a Gemini, so I don't know how many people are, you know, in the, into astrology, but we really are just like. I've got no clue what, so what month is that? So my birthday is May 28th. Ah, it's coming right it's, up. It's coming right up. And so mm-hmm. Gemini's, we're, you know, duality twins. And so, um, so that's May 21st through June 20th. Oh, okay. so that's the Gemini, right? And so we're typically kind of like, free spirit and kind of like all over the place. And so, um, so couple that with me being a Gemini, right? I mean, with me being an entrepreneur. Right. And so my, as my lawyer mentioned, and now you're part of the most regulated industry in the country, in the world. Crazy. Yeah. So it was, it was definitely different. Um, <laughs> culture shock, uh, you know, so definitely by the book. Um, so I, what I'm, what I'm really good at is putting teams. So I brought someone on my team who's more a process person, who's more of a, um, compliance person by the book, black and white, I'm gray. And so we, uh, so we, 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 we balance each other out um, as far as, cause with FinRed is, is black and white. There is no gray. Yes. Uh, same thing with the SEC is no gray. It's black. What and it's white. like, well, what's it like working with them? Uh, with, with FINRA? With FINRA and the SEC. I mean, you have to work directly with them, don't you? Yeah, we have to work directly with them. So a lot of communication, um, they follow up a lot. Um, you know, if anything changes, we have to go through a portal or a gateway system to communicate. Mm-hmm. Um, strict on deadlines, uh, very strict on deadlines, a lot of open communication, um, just checking up and following up on us. Another thing is, so previously, um, my background, I taught people, you know, how to become hotel owners. And, you know, I... Um, I did a lot of speaking. I gained a lot of media, media attention and uh, marketing, right? So did working with FINRA, you have to be careful with your marketing. Right. Um, so that's definitely been an adjustment. I've been more uh, cognizant of what I put out there to the, the media because I have to be, I've always kind of been careful with what I put in the media because the type of um, asset classes I deal with because I've worked with hotels. Um, but I'm now even more careful of what is put out, um, you know, uh, because of FINRA, because we have guidelines that we have to abide to uh, working with FINRA and the SEC. So how long did it take from when you started the process to uh, when you launched? So I had the idea in January of two, no, December 2020. We launched in July, to July 11, 2022. We got approved by, we became a member of FINRA in the end of June uh, 2022. So, so about 18 so, months, is that right? From yeah, the process took a lot longer than I thought um, because we had, to re- we had to build the technology from scratch because we didn't white label it. So we had to get that approved. Um, the ideas shifted from how we wanted to present the platform, um, going through the FINRA process, going through the, uh, the membership process. It's just a lot of, you know, back and forth. And I get it. They just want to make sure you know, who we are and understand, you know, what we're doing from a portal. Because again, our their job is to protect the investors. And so they want to make sure that we're doing everything in our power to protect the investors. Um, yeah, go on, continue. Yeah. So, so that process was, um, yeah, it was about 18 months with the technology. Then we had to change the technology. Uh, you know, I raised the, I raised the capital privately um through uh, i didn't go to venture capital route because i raised it uh, privately um and then uh and i did it on my own um i got someone to uh you know help out with the performing pitch deck but i pretty much did the pitch and everything so all of that was throughout the 18 months um and it the times changed when i thought we were going to launch several times uh, so we finally got the approval at the end of june i was super excited i was like this is like the best thing ever in life and I made, I even made a whole video, my launch video is me. I, I'm a big Beyonce fan. You, you ever heard of Beyonce? I have heard of Beyonce. Okay. Yeah. I just, you know, I'm like, a but I wouldn't fan. know her if she walked into my office. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a huge Beyonce fan. So I have like this whole video of me dancing to 7-Eleven uh, because we launched on July 11th. So. Is that on your website? No, it's on YouTube though. I oh, I'm gonna have to. I'll put that in a link. I'll put that in a link in the uh, in the. Uh, I was so notes. excited. Look, I'm a member of Oh goodness, we got to take a look at that. All right, I really want to see that. Well, now you said that you have to be careful with marketing. So what? 
what does that mean exactly and, and, and what kind of marketing are you doing and what's working for you so you have to be you can't put on anything that's misleading to investors right you can't say oh this is like the best investment ever well then what if it's not the best and best investment ever and then the investor could potentially lose her right and i don't believe nothing is the best investor nothing is guaranteed so i don't ever say this is a guaranteed deal nothing is guaranteed because anything always happens but you have you can't say stuff like that you have to let people know that you know investments are risky you know you can't you know you have to definitely let people know that investments are risky um, I again, a lot of this wasn't as difficult for me because I had to raise capital before. So I was always kind of careful. But the marketing, you know, you can't, depending on how you're structured. Well, since I'm a reg CF, we can't market the specific deal. Um, we can't, and whatever we do for one deal, we have to do for all deals. So it's no favoritism, mm -hmm. right? Um, we, uh, right now we have two deals on our site. And um, so those are the first two deals. Um, and then also we have to, you know, they have to file the form C and everything. And we just have to be careful what we put on the website. You know, but where do you where do you, you you do do marketing? So what kind of marketing do you do and and what what's been working well for you? Social media, we've done ads, um, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, we haven't really got on Instagram yet, mostly Facebook and LinkedIn and email marketing. So building our email list. Uh, we recently had an event. I had an event. Uh, it was our first in-person event uh, earlier this week. Mm. And we interviewed the uh, iconic uh, ambassador, Andrew Young. And so we had an intimate conversation with him. So that was a, a great, uh, we sponsored an event. And so people got to come in and learn here a little bit about our investor platform and also got a chance to experience some great food and, and drinks and hear the ambassador, Andrew Young, speak. So. Very cool. And uh, how's it going? Because you started uh, middle of 22, so about a year. Yeah, about Coming a year. Up on a year. Yeah, and so this is probably one of the toughest times in commercial real estate for 15 years. So what's been going on? What have you seen? How's it going? What's your experience been? The so market? the experience is a lot different. Um because i I raised up for my first hotel during COVID, and I felt like that was easier. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Really? Um, yeah, that was easier than it is now. I was like, what is going on? Right. Why? So what has happened? That's a big, that's a big statement. David. No, wait, it was, you I know. mean, it was easier for me. I can't, I can't, because that's when I bought my first hotel. And so that raise was simple. I wouldn't say it was simple, but it was just a lot easier. It was faster. It was just more of a smoother transition. I mean, smoother transaction. And then but that, um, that wasn't a reg CF raise. This was, that wasn't a reg CF. Out. That was a, a reg, reg a, a, yeah, reg D. Reg that was D. A reg D. Yeah. yeah, so that was just a simple raise. Mm. And, um, and you know, we couldn't market as much. It was just family and friends. With the Reg CF, I thought it would have been easier because now we can market. Right. Um, with this one, so we had our first deal that came onto the site in October, but we did a testing the waters. So for those who don't know, testing the waters means the Form C. And so what a Form C is, is just a, a form that outlines all the risks that have to be submitted to the SEC. And so her, this particular, the first deal actually didn't make it to the form C phase because her lender pulled out. So that was the first deal. Uh -huh. It didn't make, it made it on the platform, mm. but it didn't. So we had other deals that were trying to make it to the platform, but it just never got past the form C or for whatever reason. So the mm. first deal that actually filed the form C was the deal that we have on there now is a hotel development project. And then we have another deal, which is a retail developer. So we have two deals. Mm -hmm. And so- that process is just finding deals uh, that make sense, um, and also, um, you know, just getting the the just a lot of regulations and and, and getting the form C. So we've been working um, that first deal. I think it got on our platform in January. But what's been the challenge? Uh, is it is it because the uh, interest rates and the economy is starting to struggle? I mean, you, you look hospitality during COVID was about as bad as it's ever been oh, for hospitality uh so, and I, I, is it is it harder today uh, obviously well, it's harder from reasons. a lending perspective it, it is harder for a lending perspective oh, from a lender i see from a lending perspective it is harder uh the capital market well capital markets are always harder for hospitality because the hotel industry is so for one is so volatile and it's so risky and it's unpredictable mm. 
right? You know, because hotels are based off of nightly leases. And then also hotels are based off the economy. So then when the economy is doing extremely well, then the hotel industry is doing extremely well. Same thing with, uh, you know, when it's doing, when it's not doing so well, then the hotel industry takes a hit. COVID, right? Nobody predicted COVID, right? Nobody could predict it. And so when you're doing your performing, you're doing your projections, of course, you're not, oh, well, because, you know, catastrophe and the whole world is going to end and nobody, I mean, not end is going to, you know, pretty much shut down and no one's going to say the hotel, right? Um, so that's what happened with the, pretty much happened with the hotel industry. And so with my crowdfunding platform is more of an alternative way to raise capital, also an alternative way to invest, right? Um, because, you know, now with the capital markets and, you know, even with the uncertainty of the market, you know, even if you invest in real estate and you hold it in, you know, for a couple of years, mm-hmm. it could potentially be better than, you know, leaving it somewhere else. And of course, you want to speak with a financial advisor, you know, and see if it makes sense because everyone's personal situation is different. And then also with our platform, there's different ways that you can invest. You can use a credit card to invest. Uh, You can wire. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can do wire. What's your your minimum investment? So the minimum investment, it varies on the deal. So we have one deal on there that's $1,000. Uh, which is like unheard of for a hotel. Um, there's uh, so in the deal, the the minimum investment is determined by the sponsor. So we don't determine the, the minimum investment. And so um, you can also use an ATH. You can use a wire. You can um, again, as I mentioned before, a credit card. I think up to like five thousand dollars. And then also with um, you can use you know mutual funds, stock. You know, I mean, pull out your your you know your stock or mutual funds or your retirement self directed IRA. So it's different ways that you can invest that a lot of retail investors probably didn't know anything about. Right? They're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not a millionaire or a billionaire, so I can't invest in this commercial asset class because I don't physically have it in my bank account. But there are other alternative ways that you can use to invest to grow your net worth and to grow your investment portfolio. And so our motto with Vester, we want to educate, engage, so and therefore and then invest. So we're I'm big on education because that's how I created my platform. That's how I really got my start. Um, I'm a big proponent of educating to see more and more people of color, uh, more and more women invest into the commercial real estate um space. And that's one of the reasons why I created Vester, because I wanted to see more people who look like me and more mm-hmm. women. Uh, get into the investing space and create that opportunity for, uh, and also for non-accredited investors, right? You know, green is green. I don't, I don't see any color. So, but really I created this really for non-accredited investors Mm. who, who don't have, they don't know where to go. They want to invest and they don't know that they can invest. And here's an opportunity that I can be part owner of a hotel. I can be part owner of my neighborhood. So that's essentially why mm-hmm. I created this opportunity to connect that LPs to the um, GPs. That's interesting you said that. So uh, I, I don't I don't want to, um, gosh, you know, I, I don't I don't want to say anything I shouldn't because I know you're egg CF, but you but one of your deals here uh is in a particular location you can tell the location i'm just i don't want to set up any shows or get anything wrong but are you yeah, finding that investors are coming you're getting more interest from people in the local area around the offering you know, not, not in the local area for this deal and i don't have a, a base there yet so um um so mostly just people from all over that's been investing in this deal um you know um but we will, as we grow, I'm sure people will invest. They want to invest locally. Um, so we have another deal that's in the New England region. Um, you know, so peeps, not a lot of people don't live there. That's in our community. But it's an opportunity, right? So my first hotel was in Oklahoma. I live in Atlanta. Matter of fact, I never even heard of El Reno, Oklahoma. Right? Wait a minute. Where do you, you live? I live in Atlanta, but my hotel is oh. in Oklahoma. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little small town called El Reno, mm-hmm. but um, but from an investment standpoint, it just made sense. So the point I'm trying to make is even though the local community may not invest, um, but it's still an opportunity for others to invest, to bring, to actually invest in, in, in that community. Now, are you finding it, which do you find harder to find new sponsors, new offerings or investors? Now it's the investors. 
first when we first started, it was the deals. Now it's the investors. I'm like, what's going on? Right. So uh, that's where we are. But it's just more so it's the education. You know, I'm talking about something that's new to a lot of people, which is hotel investing. A lot of people do not know that you can invest or own a hotel. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of reaction do investors have when you when you tell them that? You can do that. Oh, what kind of questions do they have? Yeah. The kind of questions that they that's the question. It's more, it's not even a question, it's more of a statement. First, it's like, wait, I don't know you can do that. And then it's just more so they're trying to understand how you would get a return. Mm. Um, then they want to understand, you know, of course, what's the minimum investment, what's the return? Then with hotels. The question that I always get is, well, how much does it cost to buy a hotel? That's what I always get. Mm. And then it's like, well, how much does it cost to buy a house? And they're like, huh? Because it's so many different. Well, where do you want to buy the house? You know, how big do you want that? Same thing with the hotel. Where are you purchasing the hotel? And there's over like 20 different types of hotels. So what type of hotel do you want to purchase? You know, what type of hotel you want to invest in? Going back to the location, where do you want to invest in? Um, you know, do you want to focus on hotels with different economic drivers? Like, do you want to buy a hotel near Disney World or do you want to buy a hotel in a small town like El Reno, Oklahoma? Right. So the, the I get into more of the education because it's not like the people are looking for like really quick answers. Like, oh, well, what's the return? And it's like, well, the return on you buying a Waldorf Astoria will be a different return if you're looking to buy a Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> it certainly will be. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this, and I suddenly noticed the time. I can't believe how fast it's gone over here. But uh, so let me ask you uh, one final question, and then I've got three rapid fire questions for you. Let's go. Right? So, but my last question goes so where's what's your vision for? I mean, you just launched. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Kudos to you. I mean, uh, Reg CFs are really tough, and, and and you know, not coming from a tech background, and it's like you've you've moved heaven and earth. I mean, it's very impressive. Uh, so what is what is your vision? I really know what's gone into it. It's really impressive. So what is uh, what's your vision for Vesta over the next five years? Oh, uh, the next five years, Vesta will be known for when you think of crowdfunding, you'll think of Vesta. Uh, that's uh, really you, nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's the vision. The vision is to make it more accessible for um and make it more accessible for non-accredited investors. Right now, we're not structured where we can um, take international investments. So I would love it uh, mm -hmm. eventually for us to take international investors um, just to grow, um, to get more deals. Of course, shoot, we would love to become a billion dollar company, billion dollar valuation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's always the goal of any startup. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. It's, a, it's right. a gift to become a billion dollar valuation. So I would love to become a unicorn. All right. So uh, I wish you the very best of luck. I mean, you've Thank just you. started basically and you've really, uh, Davon, I mean, you've started during probably the, the hardest possible time uh, in commercial real estate. So if you can make it through this, I, I'm sure you'll be very, very successful. Well, Let me you. ask you three rapid fire Right. Last questions as we sign off. So my first of the three questions is, what are the daily habits that you have that make you successful and productive? Ooh, that's a great question. Ooh, I don't get that too often. Uh, first thing I do is now I'm, I say my, my, what I'm, I state what I'm grateful for every morning. Um, so I'm grateful for waking up this morning. I'm great. I have a four-year-old, so I'm grateful for my four-year-old, grateful for my family. I'm just grateful where I am in life. So I state, i try to be positive every day. Uh, the next thing I love music, like love it. So I play music, particularly I play probably gospel music. I play music, play anything to keep me going to keep me motivated. Um, and then if I can, if it's a great day, I'm going walking. I, it, it clears my mind while I'm playing music, of course. So it clears my mind. I recalibrate. Um, I focus. I think about ideas. I think about different ways. And then I send it over to my team. Like, okay, I want to do this or, you know, let's do this. And then the rest of the day, I'm not really a structured person. So I'll be like all over the place. But those are the three things that I do. And when I don't do it, it messes up my entire day. So this morning, exactly what I did. 
I went first. I th- I was thankful. So I thank God uh, for waking me up this morning. And I went walking and then I listened to my music. <laughs> Who's your favorite artist? Beyonce. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on your YouTube channel as soon as we're over here. All right, my second rapid fire question is, so out of all this, uh, you know, experience that you've had building this platform and getting going, et cetera, what's been the hardest lesson you've learned? Actually, the hardest lesson in your career, business, yeah. This Actually, this has been the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Mm. Um, and the reason why, because it's not really your roadmap. There's not really, um, and this is my second time doing something like this. I've created a platform focusing on educating people about hotel ownership and investing. Uh, I thought that was hard. This is extremely harder. And the reason why, because it's not really a checklist on how to do this, um, because actually I'm the first crowdfunding portal for commercial real estate, um, because there you can do other things like they have startups, but there's really none for hotels. So I'm the first one. Um, so that's been the hardest thing is I'm right now I'm cre- I'm figuring it out as I go. Um, but what helped is I did raise capital. I understand the hotel side. I understand commercial real estate, but now I'm just layering it with the regulations and how to make it successful, um, as a crowdfunding platform. All right. So last, last of my three questions and final question for today for investors. I know you focused on investors at the moment. So for any investors listening today who are wondering about investing in hotels on your platform, what is the advice that you give them? Uh, The one thing I always say to anyone who's looking to invest in hotels is really understanding your investment thesis, right? And so it's like, well, what's that? Well, hotels is over 20 different types of hotels. So kind of figure out which path do you want to go? Limited service hotels, they don't have a lot of expenses. So from an investment standpoint, those are more profitable. If you're more from a cash flow standpoint, right? If you're more of a an uh, or a dividend standpoint, if you're more of an equity person, then you want you want to look at more full service hotels. When look at more branded hotels like you know Hyatt Marriott, IHG, um, Hilton, those type of hotels, or you know even Warner for Story if you're in the, the the luxury sector. So really kind of understanding the type. So really educate yourself on hotels, um, REITs. There are a lot of different ways that you can invest. Uh, you can invest in REITs, but of course, crowdfunding now since we have Vester. Um, so really understanding who the team, so understand, so it's three things that makes a hotel successful. You have the location, you have the brand, and you have the operator, right? So where is that hotel located? Which, who's the brand? Does that brand fit for that location? And probably the most crucial thing is who's the operator? So who is going to be managing the day-to-day operations of the hotel? So if you don't know anything else about hotels, understand who's going to be operating the hotel because you can, any, just by everyone who's listening, I'm sure they stayed at a hotel and somebody had a really great experience at a hotel and somebody had a re- really horrible experience at a hotel. So as a hotel owner and investor, you want guests to have the best experience possible because guess what? They'll come back. And when they'll come back, the hotel will make money. And as an investor, you will make money. But in order for a guest to come back, they have to have the right operator that's going to um, operate the day-to-day um, operations effectively and efficiently. Davon Reeves, founder and CEO of Vesta, Vesta.com. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Thank you, Dr. Adam. I appreciate you. All right. That was Davon Reeves, founder and CEO at Vesta. Thank you so much, Davon. It was really an enormous pleasure meeting you. I wish you the very best of luck. I do think that you are very courageous. And if you can make it during this market, you will definitely hit that billion dollar valuation. I wish you the best of luck with that. As I mentioned in the introduction, this is the last episode of season four. We're going to be moving into season five. We're going to be covering all the economics, the ups and downs of the current market. The series is going to be called the Real Estate Reality Show, right? Because we're going to be talking about the reality of what's going on in commercial real estate today. No holds barred. It's going to be fascinating. It's going to be very cool. Definitely uh, subscribe to the podcast on your favorite channel. You can find links actually to all the channels. Uh, at dowercrowd.com just go to the podcast page click on any of the episodes of course click on the episode here with Dave on and you will see some links there to all the different options for subscribing 
Okay, that's it, Dave on again. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you, dear listeners. It's been a pleasure. Sayonara to season four. I'll see you in season five. And for now, this is Adam Gower signing off. Thank you.